<laughs> yeah, I know my sister got married last week. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, last year. So my brother-in-law, so, you know, they live in Houston now, but they live like an hour and a half away, right? Mm-hmm. So my sister came in, got my kids last week to go take them to see Little Mermaid. Right, right. My brother-in-law was like, all right, sis, she's gone. Let's go to the driving range. Yeah. I don't golf. Right? At all. So, at all. Oh, like, guys, like, matter of fact, let's take a bit more. I'll be on top course. golf. Yeah. So don't, don't sleep That's on my top golf game. No, nah, don't sleep. Golfing. So I'll be swinging <laughs> it. So went to the driving range, and it was kind of cool. It was hot as hell, though. Like, mm-hmm. hot as hell. But, you know, getting out there, I was connecting. I felt good. I was like, okay, I see why y'all boys like this, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but here's the thing. My form is horrible. Yeah, you got that. Like, I had to record me and try to look at myself, man. I've, I've never seen you play golf, but I already know. Right. What it it's like. horrible. Yeah. I it's already horrible. know what it looks like. Yeah. Like, I did everything. You I know, already tell you what it looks like. Bend your knees. Focus on the ball. Yeah, yeah. Keep you your know, eyes on the it's ball. It's a swing. It's a twist of the hips. You know, keep this arm straight. Yeah. Bro, none. You really need, you really need, like, to go out with a pro or get a golfing coach. If you're just starting, mm-hmm. I would highly recommend it. There's no, like, something I could buy on Amazon or, like, I mean, nah. there's, there's, a, there's plenty of things you can So buy. both the of y'all problem, golf? Mm-hmm. You okay. see, I you used to golf. golf. Uh, I just haven't had the time because you got to you gotta dedicate, you mm-hmm. know, quite a bit of time to go out there and golf. See, I'm trying to get nine, the shortcut. Like, yeah. I, like, I'm trying to go back out there next weekend nah, and, like, yeah, be yeah. that dude, you know? Play, like, a whole, like, no nine rounds. That, my line like, brother like told me I need to watch videos like Roy... Uh, what is his name? Roy, Roy McElroy? Not, how, <laughs> Roy McElroy? Roy McElroy, yeah. If you yeah, only yeah. knew how how difficult it was. You know what yeah. you know what's so addicting about it? Yeah. You get that one shot, you know, you hit you hit it like two hundred and eighty, maybe even three hundred yards. Yeah. You know, deadline. Yeah. If you it's like one out of fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You try to duplicate. But it's that one time, it's that one time that you're trying to duplicate. But it yeah. is it's a golf I mean, it's it's I, I remember I, when I when I first started, I was like absolutely addicted. But I just know I can't like dedicate the time. You got clubs. To. Yeah, and to me, clubs, yeah. like driving is the hardest thing to me. So like, like if you can drive it straight, like and long, then yeah. like that's a game within yeah. itself. See, yeah. I need a good. I feel like I'm like behind. It's, it's, like it's, I got to I mean, catch like up a, to y'all. It's, it's, no, no, you got plenty of time because yes. literally in the back of my mind, when I retire, like that's literally where I'm going to be. What are you going to do? I'm going to live on the golf course. You already but thinking you about to, retirement? Say what? I started thinking about retirement when I was 18. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, so y'all don't have any tips or like something I could read or nothing? Getting a golf no. coach because yeah, there's yeah, so much. There's so much that you have to like that you have to consider that you need to like really build repetition and habit. Mm-hmm. So, like the idea, like something even as simple as just keeping your head down, bro, you know, with your follow. As soon as your head comes up, your, come yes. up yes. the yeah. clubs come up. I mean, yeah. something simple as yeah. that, keeping elbows locked. You know, just kind of. I'm gonna get it, man. I'm gonna get. Right. I was like trying to hold it like this, yeah. keep this arm straight, yeah. and swing. Yeah. My thing about when I swing this way is like my arms. Yeah, it's like I'm stiff or something. You, you know, I just can't see you. No, nah, man, I can don't sleep. It. I'm competitive. Don't get, don't sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna get out there again. Give me a good like two months. Hey, consistency. <laughs> two months. You know, two that's all he needs is two needs months. We need, uh, we need a player profiler uh, golfing tournament. Yeah. Oh, y'all see, golf tournament. y'all see that that money they exchange yeah, with that little versus five. PJ right, merch. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, yeah. they making money like that? Yeah. yeah. I need to learn this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that I think that I think that ship has sailed. No, nah, man, no. Nah. Still yeah, got time, they, man. They, they got a senior PJ sale, tour, right? They do got a senior. <laughs> set that up. Set that up. I'm, I'm going to email OG soon. Yeah, man. Oh, All right, man. guys. Let's get the pod started. Welcome to First and Fifteen, the only podcast that's trying to get you paid. I'm here with two-time FFPC champion AB. Alongside him is my guy, Dio the Machine. Guys, I want to talk about quarterbacks for a second because it seems like quarterbacks have been pushed up the board a little bit, especially compared to last season. It looks like quarterbacks are being drafted around fourth, fifth round. I've seen a quarterback. I've seen Pat Mahomes. Third round, man. I've seen, I've seen third rounders. All right, so like second rounders. I've really? seen I've seen yeah. Pat Mahomes go what in three one, but I haven't seen him going to second. I've seen him going to second, so especially that's if you're trying to get the uh, you know that uh, so non elusive that, case that stack. stack. Yeah, yeah. yeah so a lot of people are doing now. Quarterbacks are being pushed up the board this season compared to last season. Yeah. Tell me about your quarterback strategy. Like, do you want to get one early? Are you trying to you know maybe get some value? 
get one late? Like, how are you guys seeing drafting quarterbacks this season? Yeah, I mean, so just like with everything we talk about, because everyone's in different types of leagues, different mm-hmm. scoring formats. So, you know, we're really looking at non-super flex leagues here. Uh, and, you know, let's, let's, let's focus on the redraft, for, you know, just to say, you know, the sake of this debate. I think this is a year where really you can approach it in so many different ways. I think that there is value across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're like kind of pinning me down, you know, it is June, what, 6th. Uh, and, you know, what is my QB strategy today based off of the current board, based off of current ADPs? I think I'm looking at doing a couple of different things. I'm really just kind of honestly looking at diversifying. So one. This is if you're like mass drafting, right? This is exactly. Yeah, this is yeah, if you volume yeah, drafting. Yeah. I think if you're doing just a few drafts or you're in your home leagues, my strategy would honestly be to try and get like a Mahomes, a Allen, a Hurts. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily because they are values where they're going, but because of where the other quarterbacks are going. To me, it's making them values. Mm-hmm. Like I'm in so many drafts right now where I see, you know, the run of Mahomes, Allen, uh, and Hurts in no particular er- order go like you know in the third round usually that uh kind of mid third think, round there's yeah. a certain tear break there yeah. where you know we, you know i think most of us kind of feel things kind of drop off or there's a lot more question marks but it's just odd to me then to see quarterbacks immediately go in the fourth round mm-hmm. so you know last year we saw the mahomes and the allens go early but then we saw a little bit of a, a drop you know right, we right. seeing guys kind of go later you know maybe fifth of the earliest but really in the sixth round mm-hmm. so In my mind, you know, the value or the uh, ADPs for Mahomes and Allens really haven't adjusted that much. Mm -hmm. And I think we all are in agreement that Hurts likely belongs in that tier. You know, that uh, his likelihood of repeat, you know, barring any injury is pretty high. So if those guys really haven't changed much from last year, but the other quarterbacks are coming up, then to me, that makes that tier of value. So that's a tier that I would like target. And then the guys that are going in the fourth round and sometimes maybe in the fifth round, to me, I'm just going to avoid them because I feel mm-hmm. like I'm not getting a huge advantage. To me, honestly, like that back into the third round, <laughs> all the way to the fifth round, and maybe into the sixth is just kind of one big nasty tier. So mm-hmm. you're not feeling you're not feeling Burrow and uh and um not where they're Herbert going. I feel, and Lamar. I feel, yeah, not where they're going. Not where they're going. I feel like there's even Lamar. I like Lamar, but so my strategy is to not reach in the fourth, not mm-hmm. reach in the fifth, really, mm-hmm. you know, because there are a couple guys in those rounds where I feel that I feel strongly about that if I can get on my squad, I feel like they could be uh, constant uh, producers and potential league winners. Yeah. So my strategy is try to get a guy past ADP. And mm-hmm. then if that doesn't work, there are so many guys afterwards. Later, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so many guys. This is Phil. I mean, I have a handful of guys that I, you know, we can talk about uh, in a little bit that I that I just really love in those later rounds. Yeah. So to me, like, you know, maybe the approach is don't press it. You mm-hmm. Know? Mm-hmm. If it works, you know, and especially early on in drafts, and I'm going to still consider this early on. I think the board is kind of, you know, shifting a little bit. I don't want to say tightening because we don't know if we're right just yet. Mm-hmm. You know, training camp hasn't even started, but it is shifting a bit. But I still think even with the current ADP with guys that you can get in the eighth round yeah. at times, like now is the time to me to go ahead and uh, take that stab at one of those early quarterbacks because you can still build out a full roster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always like that right. idea of like having, okay, you know, legit starting running backs, wide receivers, and flex. Yeah. You know, and so if I can like get – a quarterback early on and like you know one of the elite guys mm-hmm. and especially if we're playing in these large field tournaments these guys mm-hmm. that could potentially like give me three straight weeks of production i like to go ahead and try to grab those guys knowing that there's so much value that's on the board right now that i can potentially build up a squad you know guys like madison early on when i was drafting yeah. you know i was getting those guys like in the alexander the madison yeah. yeah so we'll see you know, we'll see what happens in that situation but if, if cook does end up leaving like that's the guy uh, you know, we talked about um, Hollywood Brown. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kept talking about like it was just inevitable that you know Hobson would get cut. So I was just you know he was constantly on the list. Uh, getting like eighth, ninth round James Conner. You know, even if the guy is not going to be there the entire season, just him being there for the first five, six games mm-hmm. makes a huge difference. As I can try to figure out the league. So if I can build out my roster and steal one of those early round quarterbacks, I love it. But if it doesn't work out that way, I don't want to try to press for one of those earlier guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of I'm the same way. I do like. See, so here's the thing with me. So when I first started getting these drafts, I was kind of seeing these quarterbacks kind of like what you were saying, just going in the third round. I was like, wow, quarterbacks are going a lot higher this year yeah. than what they were going last year. I think last year they were starting to go in the fourth round, and like you said, it's like two quarterbacks, Allen and Mahomes maybe, yeah. 
and all the other quarters are just kind of going like in the later rounds. But now I'm seeing even at the turn, the 301 turn. So the guy in yeah. the one slot, the two slot, the three slot, yeah. they're taking quarterbacks, right? Um, and then like you're saying, you see like three, four quarterbacks go in that third round, and then you see in the fourth round uh, two, three quarterbacks, you yeah. know. And then the next round, you know, you see more. So quarterbacks are definitely higher. And my approach so far has been – I don't mind it, right? I, I do believe quarterbacks, like the value of quarterbacks last year we saw was pretty high. You know, it was pretty it's noticeable as far. Teams. Right, it's pretty noticeable. <laughs> if you had that quarterback, it can give you that advantage. You know, and people want to kind of take advantage of that. Um, I like Hurts. I like Mahomes. I like Allen. But I actually don't mind the quarterbacks right after that as well. I don't mind Burrow. I don't like my Herbert. I don't mind Lamar. Because yeah. – and I always look at this with every player I pick, or especially the high players, I can see myself at the end of the season looking back and, and saying, wow, those quarterbacks were really quarterback number ones. Mm. Like, any of them I can see. If you told me Lamar Jackson ended up being quarterback number one, that wouldn't surprise me. If it was Burrow, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. If he was Herbert, it wouldn't surprise me, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't mind taking any of those guys. And it, it's kind of funny because it's such a, a wide range of players there that you can literally just pick any of them and be happy. I even see Justin Fields kind of creeping up. Um, that's the one Trevor, I'm a little... Trevor Lawrence as well. I see him, I see him in the fifth round. I'm not touching I, Lawrence I, I that can't, high. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I can't, like, in my right mind, you know, conceive drafting Mahomes or seeing Mahomes and, the Her and Allen go in the third round and then seeing Trevor Lawrence going in the right, fifth no, round. I can't, I the can't touch... For me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just not there. I can't touch Trevor. Yeah. So after those guys, and again, I'm, I'm on the fence with Fields. My, my first thought is like, no. I mean, mm -hmm. he's good as far as his running ability, and, you know, that gives you yeah. fantasy points. But yeah. there's just something about that situation that just kind of bothers me. Um, so I'm not quite sure where I'm at with Fields yet. But right after that, I'm passing up all the quarterbacks. Mm. And I'm going to wait to get one of those last quarterbacks that I still feel like can have value. Mm. Um, you mentioned Dak the other day, yeah. Dak is going after Anthony Richardson, which yeah. is crazy to me. That, that's yeah. crazy to me. Like we don't, don't, don't know what A. Rich is, is at the moment. We yeah. don't. I think you know it's it, you know, and again, these are large field tournaments, so the mindset is very different because we saw what happened last year. You can draft a guy like Jalen Hurts, and then he can get hurt, you right? Know? Mm -hmm. Or you can draft one of these guys, and they just have two stretches of bad games. Maybe it's weather. Maybe a game gets canceled. Right. Like there's so many things that you know you can't really predict. When it comes, you know, uh, for accounting for weeks 15 through 17, what we call the money weeks. So that's why I think, you know, if you are playing in these tournaments and you're drafting a number of teams, you really do have to diversify. I'm not saying go after all quarterbacks, but like you mentioned guys like Herbert. I, I love Herbert this year mm -hmm. for a bounce back year. I think that I think that team is just being slept on. Mm -hmm. You know, Keenan Allen, just like he's one of the players like, right. in that fourth round that I just love just, right. you know, clicking on. But uh, I think there are a number of quarterbacks, like you said, you can make the case that like, you know, maybe they don't, they don't need to finish number one overall. They just need to be a QB1 mm -hmm. throughout most of the season. Right. You, know, you know, give you solid production, which what I don't want, this is what I don't want a quarterback. You know, it's easy at the end of the year to look at the stats and say, this guy finishes a QB1. I always go back to this, you know, uh, the, you know, confidence in starting a guy, you know, mm -hmm. the hit rate for when you started him and when you produce. And, and this is going to be, you know, unique to each player. Right. But... If you felt like you did not feel comfortable, even a guy like you know Daniel Jones, for instance, who mm -hmm. by all accounts had a really good twenty twenty two season, right? If you that's who I'm like, drafting, by the way. Say what? Uh, that's who I'm drafting. Like that's who. That's, I'm, that, like I mean, you're targeting him. I'm targeting Daniel. I, Jones. I love, and, and that's another guy I love. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of guys. I'd be afraid of Daniel Jones, man. But this is the thing: yeah. these guys are going so late that like mm -hmm. you can double up. And I remember like before COVID, pre COVID, I think COVID really changed everything, and I think it's less of a factor now. But I think that we kind of introduced new phase where guys are drafting multiple quarterbacks. But I remember mm -hmm. being in draft rooms pre-COVID taking multiple quarterbacks, and I just remember the comments of, like, this guy's taking two quarterbacks. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, right. why are you wasting these roster spots and this and that? And I always had this in my mindset that they, they literally score the most points. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm doing this, and I'm drafting this team. I want to hit the nuts when it comes to quarterback. Why wouldn't I take as much as many swings? Well, Why would I spend yeah. more mm -hmm. on, like, these handcuffs? So if I'm, if I'm drafting later, like, I'm definitely some, – I, I have no issues with somebody who gets in a, in a draft room and, you, do, and you, you go the approach of just, like, not drafting some of those earlier guys. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get Dak. 
I'm right. going to get Anthony Richardson, right. and then I'm going to go ahead and get a love. At the mm. end. Or Daniel Jones falls, I'm going to get him. Right. Or you can see the same thing. I love, uh, you know, we saw it in uh, one of our um, – uh, recent uh, the Hardway draft, um, mm-hmm. uh, Austin Martin, shout out. Uh, I love that strategy. I've done that a couple of times as well, where like you like the upside potential of Richardson, but you just tag, you know, you, you team you team him with somebody who has a nice floor, but oh, who right. also could have a ceiling like look like a Tua. Yeah. So he was at the end on the uh, at the out of the twelfth spot and basically just took Tua Anthony Richardson back to back. So I, I, there's a, there's so many different ways that you can play it, uh, but I do think that like. You know, given where the league is, and you know, if you're really trying to win that top money, you you need to diversify because you don't know who is going to put up those monster weeks. Yeah. But I but I think the problem with that strategy that people were, were really speaking of was I think people were taking quarterback early and then also taking a quarterback late. Mm-hmm. And for me, I don't really like that strategy because how often are you not going to play that high end quarterback? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That other quarterback you have in your roster is just going to be sitting there. Those roster spots are valuable. You're going to end up having to deal with waivers, bye weeks. Those are probably going to be the, the guys you end up cutting first or, no, that or, or dropping with. off early. You know, that so so with. now on the flip end, if you do end up taking a guy late, if you do end up taking like an Anthony Richardson mm-hmm. or somebody like that, then yeah, dabble in number two because we don't know what Anthony Richardson it, it is. I mean, Correct. we're we're enamored by this upside. You know, the combine he killed it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, but let's be real, his game tape at Florida was underwhelming. Right. You know. It, at times he just looked bad, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't know what type of Anthony Richardson we're getting. I mean, he's going to have Steichen as his coach. Um, I mean, I'm not in that camp, but I, I see where you're coming from. What camp? That uh, his gun, his game was underwhelming, or that he like. I, I think I think he's going to produce. I think he's going to no, produce. No, but I mean, fancy. I'm talking about when he's in Florida. In Florida, he he had a lot of bad tape out there. Like he yeah, missed I don't a know lot of I plays. Mean, he had some bad tape, but I think a lot of it was also the offense. I mean, and the offensive skill play. Whatever the reason, it just yeah. it just wasn't that great. So mm. we don't know what we're going to get. Yeah. Of course, now he's in the NFL team, NFL talent. Again, a, a, a high end or a, a promising quarter, a coach that did well with the Eagles, so he might do well. Um, but even them, like, I don't, like, how do people feel about Aaron Rodgers this year? Are people just totally just ignoring him? Because I feel like he's going way high. too he's late. He's going really late, but people are high on the Jets. And, it's and, and, and that doesn't make sense to me. Office. If you're so yeah. high on the Jets, they have all these weapons. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know. No, I don't think people are high. They may, talk, they may talk a good game about the Jets, but how many Jets wide receivers are people actually drafting and where are they drafting? Garrett Cole is Garrett, going in the second round. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you I'm sorry, have Wilson Garrett Wilson, and then the next off the board, I think, is like Lazard, who goes for, who goes right. pretty late. There's not really a tight end that goes off. Brees Hall people don't sleep on Jeremy do. Rucker, but go ahead. Yeah, so don't you know, so, I, to, so for people to say that they're high on Rodgers, we know Rodgers is not uh, he's not going to be running like he you know like mm-hmm. he may have in the past or like you know these current running quarterbacks. So it, you know when we talk about diversifying, like there are certain guys that I'm just like crossing off my list. And so you're crossing off Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, you, you don't have to. If you draft him in the room with me and you want Aaron Rodgers, you can have him. Oh, I think mm. that's yeah. crazy. I think yeah. that's crazy. I think he's yeah. still suitable. He's still late. You can you can fill up your whole roster and get depth pieces I and have a quarterback yeah. that can yeah, actually so be started. Other guys, you. I'd rather have Kirk Cousins. I'd rather have Daniel Jones. So many right, right. Guys. I'm not I'm not knocking those guys. All I'm saying is. Where you can get Aaron, like you don't have to use high draft capital to get Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, but I wouldn't. And you can still start him. Be one. I mean, maybe you won't, but some if somebody does, it's not a bad strategy. You can have usable weeks with Aaron Rodgers as your starting quarterback. And, yeah. and, and that's yeah. a player that, yeah. again, you could take so late that it's not even going to hurt you. You could take two quarterbacks. You could take that's Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I guess to me there's just too many question marks. Uh, you know, didn't feel like he played all that well last year. I still think he's, you know, he's an accurate quarterback. But I also don't necessarily know that the Jets, you know, want to be a team that, you know, is a high pass volume team. I don't know, man. And, Hackett's and, over there, man. Well, yeah, and, like, I'm not sure if they have a choice either. And they do have a choice because they have an elite defense. Yeah, they but have they have a really good defense. So, uh, so it, to me, it's just one of those situations where there's just enough question marks about, you know, and the fact that he's like likely not going to run. There's just enough question marks where I don't see him as like a guy with upside. Like, honestly, I would much rather have Ryan Tannehill. Much rather have what? Uh, no. come on, man. <laughs> no. would much rather come have Ryan Tannehill. No. Y'all can laugh. No, Y'all can laugh. No. If you're in yeah. best ball, that's crazy. Yeah. Tannehill, 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 Tannehill might Tannehill. not even start. Okay. Right. 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 And if he does, Tannehill, he's on Tannehill, borrowed time. Tannehill, right, Tannehill. he's on borrowed time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Clock's that, ticking. Yeah, no. Clock's definitely. That's one ticking. of the biggest assumptions. Assumptions. Yes. <laughs> of twenty twenty three. All right, guys. Let's talk about uh, running backs for a second. A topic that I like to talk about. 
I played running back, so I like to talk about running back. You play running back? I play running Stop back. Stop it. But yeah. You look like a fullback. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah. right. He's a back scat back. back. <laughs> he's a scat back. back. He's a He's a change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> Change your face. Oh man! Like, Let's talk about running out there. We need to yeah, change. Yeah. We need to breathe. We need to breathe. Yeah, we need to breathe. <laughs> Don't fumble. I know. <laughs> Don't put that ball on the ground. Son. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about running backs for a second. I want to talk about handcuffs because later in the drafts, guys typically want to handcuff. You know, some of their high end running backs. Let's talk about handcuffs. The real handcuffs versus the fake handcuffs. Like. Abby, like, tell me, like, who do you think is a fake handcuff? Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, so, like, first let me define this. And I think the reason, like, the importance of this right now is because right now, again, we are very early on in the draft season. Mm -hmm. We just are getting into OTAs. Training camp has not, you know, uh, started. You know, uh, teams have full rosters. There's been no cut downs. Mm -hmm. So, and we're coming off of a draft where there's a lot of rookie hype as well. Mm -hmm. And... You know, basically making a lot of assumptions as far as who the likely handcuff is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth of the matter is we really don't know for right. a lot of these situations. We don't know. And you got to keep an open mind. That doesn't mean that you completely avoid the situation. You know, mm -hmm. you can go kind of towards Dayo's strategy of maybe just drafting towards talent. talent. Yeah. Uh, or you can like, you know, try and, you know, listen to, you know, the tea leaves and try and determine who you think uh, is going to kind of rise. Yeah. And I'll give a perfect example of this. Uh, and these are not ambiguous backfields. These mm -hmm. are like teams where we are assuming that, you know, a player is a starter and we have a good sense of if that player goes down, this is their backup. So to me, the kind of prototypical handcuff would be in Elijah Mitchell. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for me, like a handcuff that like the handcuff that I want, that I would covet, that I want and would dedicate a roster spot to is – I play this image in my mind, not that I wish it, but the starter goes down. What happens? Sometimes, yes, it's just as simple as the next guy up, and mm -hmm. he takes on 80 to 90% of the workload. Mm -hmm. Elijah Mitchell, I could see that in San Francisco. And even we could be assuming to some degree there, but I could see that in that, in that situation where Elijah Mitchell mm -hmm. takes over the majority of the workload for the 49ers as their starter should CMC go down. But then there are some times in certain situations where starter goes down and we all know that this back is, or the next back up, you know, who's second on the depth chart mm -hmm. is a handcuff that week. But because the starter went down, the team now realizes that they need more help and they feel like they may need something better. So then they turn to a vet. Mm. We saw this happen in Denver with Latavius Moore. And we see this happen in a number of situations where yeah, starter yeah. goes down and then they bring somebody on the outside. And I think that's mm -hmm. things that we kind of have to account for. And that goes to your, your talent situation. Like if the handcuffs aren't that talented, mm -hmm. then I'm really not going to be dedicating significant right, ADP right. towards a handcuff. There you go. So this segment, like as far as like, are they real or fake is not necessarily that they can't be a handcuff. But for me, it's like, do I really want to, you know, waste, you know, uh, uh, a draft pick on a player who may not even be the second, third, or the starter goes Are down. they even going to be productive yeah, are when they you be actually productive? put them in yeah. there? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have, you know, we talk, we could look at a guy like Jalen Warren. He's a hot, you know, he's a hot name, hot topic mm -hmm. right now. And, yeah, I think he's likely to handcuff. I definitely think he's worth rostering. But I am less confident in that situation that should Najee Harris go down for a significant period of time, mm -hmm. that they just give the reins to Jalen, you know, uh, Jalen Warren and that he sees – 70 to 80 percent of that work i don't necessarily know that they won't bring somebody in or that they won't do kind of like a 50 50 split you mm -hmm. know maybe he gets the more, more value touches he gets the you know the third down work and the passes maybe even some of the red zone and then you know other guys are kind of handling work in between the 20s mm -hmm. but i think those situations like you really got to kind of play it through what happens if xyz player goes down so some of these handcuffs are like grade a handcuffs you're elijah mitchells and then some of these handcuffs are like okay they can be useful, but let me not expect, you know, 80 to 90 percent of what the starter uh, was producing. Yeah. I mean, for me, same, kind of like what you're saying, if there's not talent with that handcuff, mm -hmm. then even if they get the opportunity of the role, they're, they're not going to help you win. Mm -hmm. Right. They're going to probably give you points. I mean, everybody that gets the ball has the, uh, uh, you know, has the capability to give you points. But are they going to actually help you win that week? Mm -hmm. Are they going to actually help you take you to the promised land? And some of these guys just aren't. We've seen it plenty of times. Yeah. Um, so when I when I look at these late picks and, you know, and sometimes it's not even something where you're worried about an injury. Sometimes these backers are just so good 
that they can actually get on the field and still give you usable weeks, like a Kareem Hunt last year yep. with the Browns. Yeah. You know, uh, Chubb wasn't going down, yet you could still play Kareem Hunt. Yeah. And you'd actually, you know, actually produce quite a few fantasy yeah. points. So, uh, for me, I'm always looking at talent because, again, I feel like every backup, once the starter goes down, they give you this floor of just, you know, he has the role, he gets the carries. Mm -hmm. But if they actually have talent to go along with that role, then that can actually be a player that can actually take you the distance, you know? And mm -hmm. that's how you kind of win with those marginal-type players near the end of the season. Because always keep in mind, this NFL season is, you know, it's a it's a grind. You know, it's a war of attrition. Yep. By the end of the season, we're going to be playing guys in our starting lineup that probably aren't even being drafted in the summer, you know, that people are just totally ignoring. Uh, and it happens every single year, you yeah. know? So, for me, I look at talent. I try to attract, uh, accumulate as much time as I can. Mm -hmm. If these guys don't work out, throw them back in the waiver pool, grab somebody else needed, you yeah. know. But I'm not just going to take a guy just because he's a backup because, I mean, I'm not even going to be excited putting him in my lineup, you yeah. know. But, like, who do you see as, like, a top handcuff at this I point? I mean, let's go through the, you know, I think we had, like, a little list of uh, potential handcuff situations. All right, like, let's do this. Uh, like, what's the name of that movie? Like, are you, like, are you entertained? Are you not entertained? Like, what's that? Gladiator? Gladiator. Man, I'm so let's do a that's thumb up, a, thumb up. A, <laughs> I can't remember. Not, I, went, I went blind and, for a second. And, and, <laughs> in the delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you entertained? Are you oh, man. All right. Thumbs up or thumbs down? You guess okay. that words. Handcuff. All right. Dale? I don't oh, like him. Yeah, yeah. I don't like him. Yeah. All right. Handcuff. Is it Mayor White? I don't know. I don't like him. I don't like him. All right. Michael Carter. I don't like him. Not draft him. Michael Carter? I'm not drafting him. He, he, you can you can have him. He's free. He got his spot taken by Zonovan Knight, yeah. and they got Izzy now. Yeah. I mean, they basically told you, like, he could be the backup, but I'm going to just go ahead and listen to what they told me and just not ignore, like, the signs that yeah. we saw their lead running back go down, and he was, like, nowhere to be found. He was right. it, like, it actually happened they, with him. Yeah, it actually yeah. happened. And then they drafted somebody. So, yeah. Keontae yeah. Ingram, I think we all agree on that. So, this, to, me, uh, to me, this is a questionable book. Uh, this, so, this is a unique situation. Keontae Ingram? Yeah, this is a unique situation because that's that UT. That's that UT. Level. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, he didn't go to UT. He did yeah. go to UT. Keontae Ingram. Yeah. No, he didn't. He started UT and transfer. Well, he transferred. Okay, but he didn't. Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> once a long corner, always a long corner. No, right? no, he left. <laughs> <laughs> this on. <laughs> not a long horn. Anyway, um, so this is a unique situation because the Cardinals are obviously, or not, I shouldn't say obviously, but to me they're in a rebuild, right? Yeah. So. It, does it make a lot of sense for them to like go spend money on bringing in another veteran, bringing in another bodies, mm -hmm. or just kind of rolling with what you got? Mm -hmm. So if Connor goes down, um, they may not want to dedicate resources. They may just want to see mm. what they have in a Keontae Ingram, or you know potentially somebody else on the but roster. But what if he just sucks? Say what? What if he just sucks? They may just want to roll with that. You, again, this is a rebuild team. Uh, so if he sucks, that's a good thing for them. You know why? Because yeah. they get that number one we're, pick. Real life football, yeah, but we're, we're talking about fantasy. Like, actually being able to use you, him. You can suck and still put up fantasy points. Yeah. Especially on a bad team where you can just, all you got to do is catch three or four catches, yeah. fall in the end zone once. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. He's, not a, he's not a high grade handcuff, but I think that he, I think given the situations that he is actually a real handcuff. All right. Tank Bigsby. This is a question. I like him. Yeah, like that's a. I, I mean, like Tank. Like, yeah, I know I like Tank. Before, yeah, that's a cool yeah. yeah, I, I was like Tank, tank. Uh, pre-draft, uh, and I thought he was. I thought he could be like an every down back. Yeah, Jalen Warren. Wait, we we didn't just we we. I'm not I'm, I'm not sure if he's a real handcuff though. Who Tank? Yeah, because the fact that he's a rookie and the fact that we saw Jamichael Hasty's, uh, mm, that's fair. You know, uh, take over. They added Dearness Johnson too, and they added Dearness Johnson Dearness, like. Yeah. You know, we're going to hear a lot of great things out of camp just because he's a, a recent draft pick and some yeah. of the other guys are just not as uh, sexy. But, like, to me, this is a questionable situation. And actually, actually, we'll talk, we'll talk about that. Well, I think he's the perfect example of he may not be the direct handcuff, but as far as talent is concerned, mm -hmm. I think he's ta more talented than everybody else in that backfield. Mm, and if he, do if he does eventually get an opportunity, I think he's the type of player that actually can give you you know, successful or usable weeks. Yeah. Well, I don't know so much with Hasty, and I don't know so much with Dearness. So, yeah. hmm. I think Hasty could give you like maybe like one game, but he was he's not he's not somebody you. Yeah, really nah. yeah, yeah. Jalen Warren, <laughs> I like Warren. I like. I think, I think he's real. Yeah, I think he's real. I, I mean, y'all remember, remember last year there was buzz as far as Warren and like would take that starting job. Take, take I think the actual ridiculous. starting job. I yeah. I mean, just yeah. the fact that it was being said and the 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 team didn't like deny it or anything, and it was it was just. 
Yeah. It was just something, you know. Well, and, and she was a little banged up too, so that kind yeah, of, I think that mm-hmm. was factors. It, it's it's just one of those situations where he's just like in plus opportunities when it comes to rushing, when it comes to pass catching, seeing mm-hmm. lighter boxes. Like he's just in he's in different situations than Najee. So I think when you put him in a situation, he's an every down back. Mm-hmm. I think you know you look different. So mm. I think that's just something that like we got to consider. We can't just just because these guys come in and like you know. Take well, I mean, don't forget he was an undrafted rookie last year, right? So he kind of like worked his way yeah. into yeah. that position. Yeah. So he had to show a little something, right? You right. know, but mm-hmm. all right, let's talk about Zach Evans, North Shore legend, Houston, Houston <laughs> High School legend. Yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I think it's a fa- I think it's fake. I'm just not a fan of Zach Evans. You not? I, 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 I mean, like I'm all. a little biased just because I've seen him since high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, yeah. I, I like him though. I like. Him. I do think he has a good skill set. The problem with it, he's just he's a knucklehead, man. Yeah. He and I like. If you know his history, like That's he bounced he around he like three, four out. different colleges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when he was first like getting recruited. And actually, his initial team that he picked, I think he like withdrew his commitment yeah. and on some odd reasons and then went somewhere else. I don't know. It was mm. just it was just crazy. He left TCU and let Keandre Miller kind of take up. I don't know. I, I mean, cause he could, I mean, because he was going to take his job. Maybe. Miller was just better as a maybe, better Maybe, maybe. But, but I will say this, like, you know, there's not a lot of talent behind him. Right. So. There's one guy, though. Tyon, uh, Tyon Evans. Mm-hmm. I, I like him. I yeah. like him. All right, dynasty folks. Tyon yeah. Evans. I yeah. like him. He has That's the size. Talk for the <laughs> yeah, he has the size. Look him up. Yeah. Look him up. He could be a thing. And like you said, there's not much behind him. They, they still got Kyron Williams. Yeah. yeah. Um. Who else? Well, we'll talk about the Rams people, later. I know people are hating Kyron. Yeah. <laughs> he's not every, dead yet, though. Yeah. He's not. He's thing. not dead he's yet. Not, he's not. He's so not he's dead one of those guys that's probably not going to get drafted. But like literally. That's where that's where like watching you can, you can the games, see him being a, a waiver wire pickup. This is what you got to do. You got to watch. This is why these week one games are so important. And then going back and looking at snap counts and then, but also just kind of understanding like who's in on certain positions and what they're doing when they're in. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna be looking at this. You know, a lot of these you know questionable situations. Who's the back that's coming in? When they're coming in? Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. So. All right. But this is a big one, Malik Davis. I like that you have Malik Davis here yeah. mm-hmm. because I feel like everybody's ignore him, mm-hmm. whether it's because of Ronald Jones yeah. or they think Zeke might be coming back. Mm-hmm. But he's the guy I've been drafting as much as possible. The, uh, mm-hmm. What's the other rookie's name again? Uh, uh, Deuce Vaughn. Deuce. Deuce Vaughn. I don't know yeah. why people are – so Deuce Vaughn was going ahead of him. So I was basically just grabbing Malik That's Davis. That's nuts considering how small Deuce Vaughn yeah. is. Yeah. So, well, his dad works for the Cowboys, so. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. so we don't we, nepotism. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Get it where you can get it. You know? exactly. <laughs> I ain't even knocking. Like, do your thing, yeah. man. But again, this is one of those situations where, like, yeah, Tony Pollard isn't. You know, you know, goes down. Like, does Malik Davis get the reins, or do yeah. they bring someone in? This is a team where I can see them bringing somebody in because this is a playoff team. Yeah. So yeah. you're not gonna just roll with Malik Davis and, and Deuce Vaughn. You're gonna bring somebody else in. Malik Davis was um, the running back in Florida with uh, Damian Pierce, and I think he actually mm-hmm. was yeah. the better running back. During their college years, he got more burn hmm. while there. So um, I think there's something to be He's said that he got hurt last year, I believe. So he really didn't show much. But yeah. everybody was excited about him leading into the season. So he reminds me kind of like a Alexander Madison type, almost. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's yeah. a good transition. Hey, but you're getting good at this podcast. Thing, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the Vikings for a second. Let's yeah. assume, <laughs> let's assume Dalvin is out. Madison is the starting running back. Let's talk about the handcuff being Ty Chandler. Or I, I, Dwayne McBride. Yeah, or Dwayne McBride. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Ty Or Kene Nwagwu. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Kene. I've, I've been team uh, Ty, like, all draft, all season. So, for me, it's Ty Chandler. Uh, I'm going to call him the real handcuff. Mm-hmm. I still think, you know, it could be the other guys. I'm not, you know, ruling that out. But for me, I'm not even – I'm not diversifying now. Well, well for me, I, I, I'm just – it's it's ambiguous to me. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not putting my claim on anybody specifically. But if I was to pick one, I, I'd probably lean Chandler because he has the – Receiving ability, mm-hmm. you know that. Like I said, that Konami code last week for running back. Yeah. So McBride is not much of a catcher. And again, I mean, know? sometimes just think like a coach. Like this is a playoff team. Like they are likely going to want somebody with experience back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you just know, one idea, year experience. Like, yeah, 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 just one year. But even that one year in that system is still important. Yeah, mm-hmm. pass protection. Hey, just like, I, I like know, to. This, 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 those things are important. I like to throw something out there, and mm-hmm. it, might, it might be a little controversial. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in Alexander Madison being the guy long term there. What's long term? Yeah, I think he might. He could probably start the season, you know. But I don't think he's going to be the true workhorse, and I'm not sure he'll really hold on to that job the full year. You've never been an Alexander Madison guy. 
I mean, he is, he is what he is. He, <laughs> he didn't change. Y'all. I don't, I don't, yeah, the I don't, talent all of a sudden zoom into yeah, his body or anything. I, I think uh, you know. I think what I, what I took notice and the reason I'm, I'm Team Madison. I have been attacking him in drafts, uh, but I try to get the value because I you just got to realize that like if Cook's eighty, if Cook does get released, his ADP is going to rise. Madison's ADP is going to rise. So I try not to like reach for him. You, just you don't think his value. his his value is baked in already? Who Madison? Yeah. No. No. So you think people are drafting him? So, so you don't think people are going at the draft right now, seeing Madison and not no, think he's a starting do not running think back? Like that. People do not think like that. That's why Marquise Brown's mm. ADP is starting to rise. So, people don't go in the draft thinking, oh, for sure, Cook is gone. Man, if they did that, then Madison would be going in the fifth, sixth but, round. I mean, but that's what I'm asking you. Mm. Like, because I believe people are drafting with the assumption yeah. Cook is gone. I, think yeah, right. yeah, Everybody, yeah. I don't think there's they, anybody out there that believes Cook will they, remain on the team. So they're drafting with like 80% of that assumption. They're not drafting with 100% Okay, e- even, even with just 80. Even with just 80. Yeah. The so, where, where he's being taken, you don't think that's baked into his price? If I can, I'm getting him in the eighth round right now. I guarantee you if Cook leaves, he will not be going in the eighth round. I mean, he will not. He he'll will probably. Not. I mean, just that that initial That's news. He'll get a, he'll, that initial news. He'll get a bump, right? Mm-hmm. The day the day the trade two happens, you will probably see him get. Tra- you think you'll go two full rounds higher? If he's going in the eighth right now, I think he will definitely be going in the sixth round, if not earlier, okay. because it's a high powered offense too, and he can catch passes. Okay, you know. I mean, I think that would be a mistake, but I, could, I mean, time will tell with that one. Because, because again. I think people are drafting him right now. Because on the flip end, if we find out tomorrow, say the Vikings put out a tweet, uh, they decide to keep Dalvin Cook, mm-hmm. right? I think Madison's ADP will free fall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Free fall, right? Like, I'm talking about like... Mm, but how, I mean, like, no, but how when, far... Do, last well, if he's year, going he was going now, in the 10th, 11th. Right, that's what I'm saying, like oh, 11th, yeah, yeah, like yeah, 11th yeah, right? Yeah. So, so, if he's going 8th now, I think people are already taking into consideration... That Cook is may, gone. He may. You think there's mm-hmm. people that are still holding out hope that Cook is going to stay there? Or that Cook might stay there? I think so. But like I said, like, mm. for, t- take it like this. As someone who's drafting Madison right now, mm-hmm. yes, I'm trying to take advantage of an ADP and trying to take advantage of a situation that, that I think is the most likely situation. Okay? Okay. That could be 100% wrong. But I think the most likely situation is Cook is not there. So I'm trying to take advantage of that ADP. Well, the, but if the, I felt, though, if I felt 100% that Cook was not going to be there. I was 100% confident that I would be taking Alexander Madison probably okay, six, so no later than the seventh, but so six round you, every single time. You every might time. feel mm-hmm. 80% Cook is gone, right? Yeah. But, and this is just a total assumption, mm-hmm. I think there's a, a, a faction of people out there that 100% feel like Cook is gone. Mm-hmm. Like 100%. Like and even with them thinking that, they're still drafting Madison in the eighth round right now. I disagree right? with that take. You, th- you think most? You, you think there's not people out there that no, believe he's? I disagree he's with that take. That's just that's just human mentality. Right now, nobody is making that 100 percent assumption, and is like you know, if they know, were doing man. that, he would not be going in the eighth round. That's yeah, just not, I kind of agree. Not I kind of agree because it's I don't because, know. because you have some. Like, what is it? What is it? What, what is it? We have it's a small sample size. We have like four games with uh without any cook. And he's an RB one. I mean, but, in but, each but of those here, games but here, except for one. But here about what they're putting out. Everything that's been out there is they tried to trade him. They almost traded him. I they, agree. They tried to get him to take a pay cut. They want to release. I mean, I hear you. It I, I hear you. Nature. But what I'm saying is, again, you're probably thinking more level headed. Like there's always a chance. Like there's always probability, right? Yeah. yeah. But there's also people that are so certain in their beliefs and things, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's a faction of people that are so certain. And, and I don't think they're 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 I think they're, they're wrong. Minority. I think they're in the minority. And if they weren't, if they were the majority, then his ADP would be higher. Is what I would say. Hmm. Hmm. We'll oh, be able to see. I mean, oh, if, no. he, if if Cook gets released or traded, we will be able to monitor his. ADP. I mean, everything has come out. There hasn't been any bit know, of, but of it news has not happened. Right. I'm just saying there hasn't been any bit of news saying that there's a possibility he remains. Right. So. Well, they say uh, buy the rumors, sell the news. Like, if that rumor's been out there strong, like strong drum beats, hard, strong drum beats, right? And he's he's still going in the eighth round. It sounds like, and his ADP maybe it's, it's kind of come up since, but literally like earlier, like in drafts when I started drafting. What's his, a, a can you check glove. his ADP right now? You're in the draft right now, Chris. Where, where did he go? Because I think you're pretty low in your draft. I'm just curious. Because uh yeah, his ADP may be like as Madison's far as Madison's in the F- sixth round on my uh, sixth round. So that's a guy. Yeah, okay. That's six. a guy who is pretty confident yeah. in his pick. Right. But six, right. As, we're so, in the sixth round. Yeah. That's early, six three. Yeah, so, six, so again, so that's, that's what I'm saying. I feel live. like I feel like his value is baked into that. 
as far as Cook being yeah, gone. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of how he, I feel. If, if he ends up in the so, so, third okay, round, so, but so, I don't think I don't think I don't think. Let so me, if let Cook me, is released, yeah. do you see him going higher than six? I or see, trade I or whatever, could, release trade. Yeah, I could see him kind of going into the fifth round here or there. Just so fifth, on the probably top Maybe the back end fifth, of the fifth. Yeah. Just, because, about, just because, remember, you've got to remember the landscape of 2023. There are a mm-hmm. lot of starting running backs or presumed starting running backs mm-hmm. who are going in the sixth round. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's so, fine, look, I'm going to pull up. You know, this is Fancy Mojo. Shout out to Fancy Mojo ADP for FFPC uh, Players Championship. Uh, and then, you know, this is just ADP for all of May. He is in, you know, he's going in the mid seventh round right now. Okay. okay? Uh, after David Montgomery, uh, but before Javante Williams. And, and that's from all the drafts thus far. Yeah. So you would assume that takes into the average the early drafts when people weren't really no, that's, sure. That's for May. That's specifically for oh, May. Oh, May. Well, we're in June May. now, so that's that's yeah, including yeah. May first. So yeah. you would think May first. There's probably a fair amount of people that still thought Dalvin yeah. was going to well, remain. We can, yeah. we can look and at that. Now I would think most people are probably like, yeah, we can look at. Uh, but let's move on, guys. Let's okay, move on yeah. because I want to do one more. Let's talk about Derrick Henry's handcuff, Tajay Spears, mm-hmm. or is it Hassan Haskins? It's like, are Spears. we just it's we're just going to just Man. move? Hass- yeah. I have so much Tajay Spears. It's not even funny. Yeah, I got him a lot in uh, my rookie dynasty drafts. Yeah, uh, but Haskins. He didn't really just show I me told much last year. What, what, what you I did. Last year? You did. I'll give it to you. I'll give like, it to you. And, and even if you look at how they used him last right, year, right, Henry, right. Henry went down, <laughs> right? Henry went down, and they used – who's the guy they used? Um, I'm drawing a blank. It was Haskins. That says, that says enough. Right. And they used, right. Uh, but they used the guy that was actually that useful, yeah. that you uh, can play. And they still didn't get like Haskins much burn. Back yeah. too, uh, you know? So if, if you actually have the opportunity that we're asking for – Happen and you can't produce, and then the next year they draft the guy and what well, they take Tajay in the third or fourth round this year. Be the third. Yeah, it's like come on, like what what else are we looking for? Like what else needs to be shown? I don't yeah. think Haskins is that guy. Um, so no, and Tajay was one of the most productive running backs in college last year. I think the only concern with Tajay is really just that arthritic knee. That and, report and, that came out. And really, we don't care about that in the first couple of years. Oh of yeah, career. yeah, we'll deal with that down the line. We're gonna get these girly years. Yeah. For yeah, now, round, round and then three, once he yeah. falls off the cliff, and the, all right, we'll, we'll take nice, him out back. This Dr. Hillier is who you were talking Hillier, about. Hillier, yeah. Yeah, yeah the so, former Brown yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, not, he's yeah. Not, yeah, he's not with the team anymore. No. Uh, so the nice thing about Tajay Spears, though, too, is like it is not out of the realm of possibility that Derrick Henry gets traded. Mm. So if that happens, like I love – and he's he's such a late handcuff, too, that like the I, this is – I still think Derrick Henry the problem with, is But the like, problem with Henry – Yeah. Okay. The problem with that scenario, if Henry does get traded, I don't think Sharp, I mean, Spears is going to be the running back one day one. I, I don't think they're just going to say, okay, we trust there. this run. He'll, yeah, yeah, he'll yeah. probably get there, but, but I don't think week one they're going to say, okay, we're going to trust you to yeah. be our main back. Yeah. We're going to trust you in pass protection, all of that stuff. But going where he's going right now. Where's he going? Like late? I'm pr- pretty sure yeah, late. He's going late. Double digit rounds. Is he being drafted like the handcuff? Yeah. Haskins, okay. I don't even. I, so I Haskins not even being discussed right now. Okay. But yeah, yeah. So I like Spears. Um, I like him a lot. Like I said, for Dynasty, I love him. Uh, we'll see what happens in redraft. We'll see what round. happens in redraft. So okay, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the biggest assumptions so far of this season because it seems like a lot of of the fan, a lot of high stakes fantasy players are making certain assumptions. One for me, ASS about- assumptions. ASS assumptions. assumptions. Don't right. make an ass of yourself. Right, right, right. Sorry, right. We, we can't cuss on this. Why not? We can't curse on this. Why not? Oh, we didn't tell everybody right. what we're part of now, right? Oh, no. Like, I mean, I guess we've tweeted it out, but we're part of the yeah, player profile f- family. So, you know, we're going to be so, censored when we say certain cuss words now, right? But did they censor us? But we got people know. for that. So, we curse. Well, we, we got cuss as much they now bleep it out. before they eventually they censor, it censor us. Yeah, yeah. So, we got to say ass right now. In fact, we can test them. Yeah. Ass, ass. <laughs> Are they beeping all, right, all that out? All right, all right, all right. Don't we need to test out like other curse? No, I'm just no, 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 no. All right, so let's talk about certain assumptions that high stakes players are making. Mm-hmm. For me, I've been drafting Chris Godwin. I think that I've been smashing the button on Chris Godwin. What yeah. are certain assumptions that that the fantasy community is making early on that you guys just don't agree with? Yeah. For me, it's Tampa Bay having a bad offense. I know that you share that opinion, AB. <clears throat> like, let's talk about like certain assumptions. I share that yeah. too. I'm a big on yeah. Godwin this year. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, and this is kind of I think just like a bigger idea. I mm-hmm. think that the assumptions is basically that we deem. 
X team is going to have a bad offense, therefore they're really not going to be valuable or as valuable fantasy, fantasy relevant. Yeah. yeah. And this to me is like where you win. Sounds like a Texas draft. comment right there, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there are a number of teams. We've already, we talked about the Titans. Like everybody's just assuming that the Titans are going to be terrible. I think people forget that the Titans used to be a good team offensively. Okay. Yes, they traded away A.J. Brown. Uh, but they also had major injuries last year to the O-line. They had that kind of revamp. Their starting quarterback was injured, and they had a guy who was just absolutely not ready, had to start uh, a day or, or a QB3, you know, who would normally be a third quarterback option on the depth chart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think that's a team where – and they just and they're bringing in a new offensive coordinator, you know. Uh, actually, you know, one of our – Tim Kelly, yeah, former our, Texans, Texans OC. Uh, mm-hmm. Faithful. So I think we see this team kind of, you know – open it up a tad bit but I think anytime you have a mobile quarterback in Tannehill and a guy who's kind of been in the system uh, or been with an organization for a while and he has something to prove I keep telling people like I really feel like Tannehill is going to have like this like 2022 uh, YOLO uh, uh, Andy Dalton type year if you remember Andy Dalton with the um, you know last year this man just like did not care Mm -hmm. he was throwing in a double coverage uh, I mean, he, he played very well, but he was being a lot more aggressive, way more than the Andy Dalton that we had remembered in years prior because he was basically right. playing like, look, you know. I ain't got nothing to lose. I, I ain't got man. nothing to lose. Yeah. I'm they want to bring back Winston anyway, yeah. so I'm just going to So he literally was play playing like he had nothing to lose. And <laughs> By the way, Andy Dalton, another Houston uh, yeah. uh, legend. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Katie High School. Down, down. But basically, and you didn't see him like check the ball down because he was trying to prove that he was a legit. Which pissed us off because we oh, had so man. much Camara. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like That's bro, you see subject. Alvin right there. What are you wide doing? Open. In the fact, <laughs> he's wide like this. open. <laughs> People like Alvin fell off. Yeah, he may not be like a good runner in between, but he didn't fall off. He just wasn't getting the you know he wasn't getting touches, those easy yeah. dump downs. Yeah. But yeah, what I'm saying is I think you know I think this is a team that could potentially surprise. We're already hearing the drum beats, unfortunately, yeah. of one of, of our who? of one of our players uh, that we're trying to uh, you know. Have a, a nice little ownership of who? No nah, man, say it, say Burks? it. Listen, yeah, yeah, Burks. Everybody, man, knows I'm it. pissed yeah. off about that <laughs> yeah. because the day I put that in the group chat, <laughs> yeah. remember I put whisper. I remember, I, I remember. There was no whisper. I I thought, nobody was on Burks. Oh, yeah, nah, <laughs> like I heard nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. literally the the next week, the very every day, yeah. Yeah. Burks, Traylon Burks did this, Traylon Burks did this. Like what the fuck is going on? It, just, it, just, take, it just takes one highlight video. Yeah. But again, like that's a situation where like I feel like you know some of these players are being undervalued and like there's some real opportunity that not just in redraft but also in best ball yeah a guy like Tannehill, i guarantee you he's going to be picked up during the season and i guarantee you he's going to be a valuable starter throughout the season he ain't gonna be picked up bro he will be because he has legs people forget about this he has waiver weeks that's okay waiver wires yeah yeah, yeah. but no i'm I'm he's gonna he's gonna have a run of games where he's just putting up 20 plus points i guarantee it let me ask y'all something Mm -hmm. this is totally off subjects two questions right Yeah, yeah What y'all think um, these rookie quarterbacks going to do? Not not AR, but more Bryce and Stroud. Like, what? Wh- how do y'all see the season playing out? I believe out? in Stroud, man. I do. But do you think they're going to be? Do you think they're going to be players that people will pick up off the waiver wire and actually consider playing? Like, do they, you think they'll I have that not. type of season this first year? I do not. Or do you think they're all just going to be just? I do not. The I think underwhelming I think, quarterback. I think Texas are really going to focus in on a run, try to put Shroud in like favorable situations, play action pass. I think they're going to incorporate RPO. You listen to the uh, the press conference, like they were kind of giving him. Oh, you, you know see, I'm listening. Yeah, you, you, you know you you, you got to listen because players are like they'll give you like a couple little nuggets here when they start talking about stuff like oh I was watching Christian McCaffrey tapes and you know yeah, watching yeah, him receiving. Yeah. Ignore that. I mean, like they got so much buzz, but when they start talking about this is what I wanted to hear because mm-hmm. this was an assumption that we were all making. Yes. He, you know, the OC is coming from San Francisco. But what I wanted to hear is that they were bringing over the components of the San Francisco offense. Right. And we heard Schultz say that, and we heard Damian Pierce say that. Yeah. So to me, already now I have something that I can at least have a basis for to try to extrapolate, you know, my thoughts on some of these players. Well, well, last year didn't wasn't Kenny Pickett usable for some teams? A little yeah. bit, a little bit, right? Or am I, I just I, totally I, off? I, 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 I was never there. there. I was never okay. there. Okay, okay. To me, he's like like players like that, like him and like uh, Bryce Young. Those are less ideal. Because so you don't really see Bryce Young. At, you think Stroud and Young are just gonna be no, on the waiver wire the whole season, basically? Well, at least with well, we'll see. Mm, if, we'll see if, so. if if they put Stroud in situations where he's uh, they're using his legs a little okay. bit because I, I think they are gonna incorporate that. I think it's a nice thing you can do for a quarterback his first year. But I think with a Bryce Young, given how small he is and like you know he's their number one overall pick, what they invested to get in. Them, they don't want him running. I think. So right. I, think I mean, yeah. Bryce, Bryce is not going to yeah. be a running thing. It's going to be straight from yeah. his arm. So right. you know, that means you're you 
picking him up to like rely on his arm, and that's just something I don't want to do. Like, I why would I want to start him? So you don't you don't envision him having a, a type of season where it actually is. No, Tannehill's no. right there for you. I keep telling you. I keep telling you. No. Tannehill, <laughs> Tannehill, stop it. <laughs> like, like Joe Burrow, stop. Joe Burrow's rookie year, he was usable <laughs> for some games. But Joe Burrow's different though. Yeah. And he had different receiving options. Who did he have? T. Higgins is it? He had T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Who did, didn't he have? A who's a who's the uh, tight end back then? Joe Schmo. Right. No, yeah. no, he, I think he had a little jit tight end option. CJ CJ Azuma. Oh yeah, okay, it was Azuma. CJ Azuma. Azuma. No, 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 one game CJ Azuma had like three touchdowns, yeah, something like just went crazy. Yeah. Okay, here's my next question. Again, off the topic. Right. Topic. Who's gonna be the worst team in the NFC North? Ooh. I put this out in the group chat. <laughs> People didn't like my answer. I said the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> you think gonna be the worst? I I doubt nice. they're gonna be the worst. No, this, I'd this, take no, right no, no, there. no, 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 no. So this was predicated because I was like, you know, Minnesota really should just like cut their losses now. And trade Kirk Cousins, and I think people. Oh, took I remember. That. Yeah, and people, th- and yeah, people took that. that as like as if I was like knocking Kirk Cousins. I'm like, I'm not knocking Kirk Cousins. What I'm saying is like, I don't think Kirk Cousins is good enough to like lead them to where they want to go. Right, right. And so you either like commit yourself to him like for years because he keeps like just doing this thing where he's just like rolling over his contract because right. like they like are stuck. Or you like try to get like kind of like that slight above average, above yeah, mediocrity. Yeah. So I felt like you know, like I, you know, like my example, my uh, you know, for where I thought they should like consider trading them was to the Commanders, because Commanders could like you know be a team that could like. Because you don't like Sam Howell. Say what? You think Sam Howell is a bum? No. So Sam Howell is another guy. Like I probably would rather pick up Sam Howell over any of the other rookie quarterbacks. Uh, I, I, yeah. you know, I talked to Sam Howell. Yeah, Howell yeah, that day. So Y'all I made me defend Sam Howell. Yeah. And I'm not even yeah. Sam Howell fan. I'm yeah. over here bringing that pass information. Like he was supposed to be the number one pick. <laughs> well, we were comparing it to somebody else, so that was out of that. Yeah, was a little bit out of. So, context. so Chris, what about you? NFC North, worst team. Chicago Bears are still going to be the worst. So you still team. see that's, their. That's I still the see the Bears. That's probably the pick. They still need more receivers there. I agree. I don't believe in Chase Claypool. I don't think that he's going to be a viable option. I, I think well, he's not even going to start, play. right? Mooney and uh, DJ Moore. Yeah. Would you believe in start Mooney? Wide receiver six. No. <laughs> okay. I believe no. in Mooney as a wide receiver too. The issue with the Bears is not their offense, though. The issue with the Bears is their defense. Yeah. Well, so that's that, that's that's what's going to keep them being. Or, uh, you know, I was, I, was, I was actually hoping, maybe not hoping, but I was interested to see if either of y'all said the Packers. No. Nah. You know, you know, you know, I'm a, a love. Well, that's, that's, another, the, that's another quarterback that I would draft mm-hmm. over. Yeah, you're a Jordan Love guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you're going to have a whole episode about Jordan Love with, uh, you know, expressing your love I mean, about I him. I mean, we got, a, we got so many double entendres. <laughs> no, the, the, re- the reason. I mean, how many show titles can we get? Out the of that? I mean, the title just wrote itself. <laughs> yeah. that's the, it. reason I w- the reason I, w- I w- was asking the question because Jordan Love is the only unknown quarterback at the moment in that division, mm-hmm. right? He's the only one where we really don't know what he's going to be, True. you know? So I don't know. Yeah. It, it, and it'd say, be I, weird to say the Packers end up last yeah. in that division, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't say it. Because to, to me, the Packers, even though, you know, and quarterbacks are a very important position, but to me, that, you know, the team, like, they're just a better overall team. They got right. some, you know, issues on defense, you know, here and there. But I think the, they got a pretty decent O-line. They got some receiving options. They've got, you know, rookies coming into their second year now. Jaden Reed, rookie. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, revamped. They're, they're young, but to me, they're kind of like revamped. Uh, we'll see what they do with, you know, at tight end, with the rookie tight ends. But they got two running backs back there, so I think they're going to lean on the run. Yeah. Uh, but the way that offense is set up is just like he just needs to be accurate. Okay. And, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, and use his legs a little bit. Yeah. So as far as me, the assumptions, and I don't have any kind of specific <clears> – <throat> you know, this player or this team. For me, it's just, y'all know me. I'm always a, if I see everybody zigging, mm-hmm. I, I want to go see what Zag is doing, right? So everybody saying this team is going to be bad or this player is going to be bad, I tend to look at those teams or those players a little bit closer to see if there's just a slight edge to be had. I'm talking about teams like the Cardinals. Everybody's ignoring the Cardinals right now because they think they're just going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, a team like the Rams, everybody's mm-hmm. – Ignore the Rams because they yeah. just think they're going to be horrible. And I'm not saying they're not going to be horrible. Um, the, the Texans, Texans. too. The Texans, the Texans too, yeah. receiving corp. Like, they're, yeah. like, I'm not saying they're, gonna, they're not going to be horrible. What I'm saying is there's something that can be had there. These teams are not going to score zero points. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. not going to go in every game and just hike the ball and kneel it four downs and then turn it over. And this is the they're thing going about, to put up points yeah. to somebody, you know. So, sorry, go ahead. And yeah. this is the thing about the Texans is that, like, it's a completely new – Coaching staff. Mm-hmm. So the idea that you can just take what they what has happened in the past, completely new coaching staff with a lot of new personnel as well. Right. Like you just like those are things that I think you really got to take into account. Somebody is going to be fantasy viable. Useful, there. useful. Yeah. Somebody yeah. will. 
Yeah. So let's take a look at the third round of the draft. I want you guys to think about the third round. Mm -hmm. Who do you see being a bust in the third round? Like, who do you see not panning out? I think those first two rounds are pretty solid for the most part. We'll probably have some busts there as well. But that third round really hurts. Who do you see in the third round who could really Is this your draft right here? But this is Fantasy Mojo. Okay. Okay. So this is the current ADP. Yeah. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to choose two players. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the first player is Travis Etienne. And actually, you know, I want to talk about Travis Etienne for a little bit. We're going to go off on a little tangent. Right, and, it's going to, and it's going to sound like I'm talking in circles because I am talking in circles right now. All right, go ahead. Uh, so I think he's the biggest bust you know, right. for reasons that we discussed earlier. Uh, not just Tank Bigsby, but we don't know if they're going to be, you know, uh, you know, Jermichael Hasey's is still going to have a role. Even we don't even know Dearness is going to have a role. And we don't know what these, you know, new receiving options with the addition of Ridley, whether or not it's going to become kind of a more pass-heavy option or a pass-heavy offense. Mm-hmm. I see this really kind of as, a, uh, as a, not a true RBBC, but like where there's going to be multiple backs used, okay? Um, now, that's why, I, you know, I'm kind of seeing him as a potential third-round bust. Like, he's a guy I would, like, not touch in the third round. And even last year where he kind of had the full reins, and you can kind of see him wearing down at times, I think that's not what the team wants. But it wasn't all that great. You know, remind, remind, remember, or remember, we're playing 17-game season, so I think he had, like, about 1,100 yards. Three uh, rushing, about 300 uh, 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 yards receiving. And I can't remember how many receptions he had, uh, maybe about 30 or so. But it's just something that we expected more. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we, he first came out, we had a discussion. And I told you, like, I just, like, was not a fan because I felt like a lot of his touches were manufactured in this high-powered offense. And he was just running wide open in space. And we haven't seen that receiving option. But – this is the one thing that I would consider, and I think his ADP is going to continue to drop, and I think this is when I'm going to you know, potentially consider acquiring some shares. There's a lot of guys that are going behind him that I just love, so he's going to have to drop quite a bit. But what if we see a role switch for Travis Etienne where now that they have legit receiving options on the outside with Kirk and Ridley and Ingram and defenses have to account for that, including the legs of Trevor Lawrence, what if we now see them actually incorporate ETN in the pass game, like legit incorporate him in the pass game? And now that you have a Tank Bigsby who's talented mm-hmm. and can run in between the tackles, remember, I could, you know, the, you know, running in between the 20s, you know, carries to me aren't that important. But what if we now see ETN used more heavily in the pass game? So we see him going from just two to three targets a game to maybe four or five targets a game. Maybe we see him actually in the slot position. To me, that is where his value would be retained. To me, that's honestly within the realm of possibility is that we see that switch. Because to me, that makes the most sense. Like, he is athletic. He is very good in space. He is very explosive. Mm -hmm. So let's not beat him up in between the tackles. Let's give that to Tanks Bigsby and let's put him in space. And let's also, like, get them on the field at the same time. So I think that's kind of a thing where, like, really during the OTAs, offseason, training camp, I'm going to be listening very, very closely, and I am going to be paying attention to seeing if he's, like, split out wide and things like that. Second guy is TJ Hawkinson. Um, oh. I'm going to have some shares, yeah. but, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't a huge Jordan Addison guy, but I think this was, like, the perfect landing spot for him. Yeah. Where he doesn't have to be a number one and he can do what he does mm-hmm. uh, to his best. To me, he's just like a souped-up Adam Thielen. So hmm. now I think you don't have Hawkinson needing to do what Hawkinson was doing towards the end of last year. Yeah. Now you have Addison instead. So I think Hawkinson goes back to being kind of a more inline tight end. And I think they're going to need a little bit more help there, especially if Cook is not there. Uh, and so I don't know if we see, like, we see, maybe we'll see a couple games where he's, like, you know, getting eight to ten receptions. But I think those games are going to be far and few in between. If Addison can get healthy and get back onto the field, I think we see him take over that number two receiving option with uh, Justin Jefferson. So I think Hawkinson maybe to me like should be going more around the uh, Goddard area. So much disrespect for KJ. So much. I, I can't even agree with that because he was the one that helped me get to fifth place last year. <laughs> so <laughs> I know you got love. He, yeah, I, I got, I got a special place in my heart for TJ yeah, Hawkinson. Understand. So understand. I, I just can't accept that. <laughs> Honestly, the same way you feel about Pollard. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that money that year, yeah, yeah. yeah I can't do that with Hawkinson. I mean, but the, the year that Drake won me money, the the following year, I was like, I don't want nothing to do. With this guy. Yeah. I don't want nothing to that do was with different. Drake. That was <laughs> different. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. so my guy is, and I don't have any stats to back this up. Yeah, I don't have any like 
PowerPoint or nothing, right? right. This yeah, is just no analytics. a feeling. Yeah, I'm not an analytics guy like y'all, so I don't do that. But my guy's actually DK Metcalf, right? Mm. And it's not so much a knock on DK Metcalf or his talent, mm-hmm. but it's just more so I think the other options available there are being undervalued a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Tyler Lockett had a damn good season last year. Mm-hmm. He's still very useful. Still knows how to get open. Doesn't allow us to get. I remember there was like this uh, video that was out last year where it's like every time Lockett caught the ball and he was about to get hit, he would like fall to the ground, right? Mm-hmm. Like he would just try to avoid that contact. And some people were kind of use that as a knock. While well, I was more looking at it like, okay, this guy knows how to protect himself. He knows how to kind of get that longevity. Yep. Uh, and Gino actually had a connection with with uh, with, with with Lockett. Mm-hmm. Um, but Besides that, and I put a tweet about this earlier today, I think Jackson Smith and Jigba might be more significant for this team than what mm-hmm. we're considering at the moment. Like, number one, he was a first-round pick. That's mm-hmm. already a big deal, right, for most cases. Already yeah. a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. was I think he was the first Roberts who was drafted in the draft, right? Mm-hmm. Second. Uh, who, by who? Quinn Johnson. No, no, no. He was before Quinn. You sure? Yeah, he was before Quinn. Okay. All right. um, and then after Quinn was was Addison. All right. um, so he was the first wide receiver drafted. Think back to what Garrett Wilson, who everybody's talking about, is a top 12 receiver right now. Chris Olave, who, who I saw on reception of procession, was talking about how he's in the top echelon of receivers. Both of those guys said this guy, Jackson Smith and Jigba, is a better receiver than them. Mm-hmm. Right? Cat. Yeah. We'll, we'll go it ahead. might. Okay. I, you know, that's the first, that's the first stop. It's cap, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. right. I mean, we but, all but, use that. We all, not, we, all, we all use that quote. I, I understand that. But, but I use the quote we're myself. not there. We're not at practices yeah, with them. Yeah. Something's agreed, there. Agreed, agreed. Right? Something's <laughs> agreed, there. Agreed. I, I might not get it, agreed. but something's there. And we just might not know how much the, the Seahawks love this guy. They might say, look, you're going to be in the slot. Yeah. And if you're in the slot, you're our safety blanket. He's probably going to thrive in the slot. Yeah. So when you take all that into consideration, they also brought in Charbonnet, who has receiving chops. Yeah. You know, they have all these new weapons. And for us to just say, DK, yeah, we know what you've done. You know, he has a, a, a okay route tree. It's really just more deep passes and like slants. slants. You know, yeah. these little simple routes. He's just yeah. a big bully out there. Yeah. Um, I just kind of see if anything's going to hurt, it's going to be his production. Mm-hmm. And if he was taking in the fourth or the fifth, I wouldn't even be saying what I'm saying. But I think he's being taken so high, people are kind of drafting him at his, at his ceiling. And unless they just ignore all these other pieces they added, who are all, again, talented. Like, we're not talking about pieces that don't that aren't capable of producing. We're talking about pieces that actually are capable of producing. Unless they just don't plan on using them, I don't see how DK can live up to the type of expectations there right now. I give you the uh, devil's advocate or the pro, the pro to the DK argument. Okay. Uh the pro is basically they run the same offense uh, where it's mostly two wide receiver sets. Okay. And it's Lockett and DK. Okay. And so Jackson is basically. So do you think they're not going to play Jackson? You think they're not going to play I three think receiver they, sets? I think Jackson is basically the Lockett replacement. I think they saw an opportunity. So you think they're going to gonna bench Lockett this year? No, 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 no. I think for next year. Lock, I think this is. So, think you, this so is you don't think Jackson is going to be useful this year is basically what you're saying? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. See, and, that, and that's kind of where we disagree yeah. because I, I do think yeah. they have a role in just, mind for, for, for just, Jackson you know, it, you would, day it would, one. It would, it, would, it would take a head coach who's just sort of kind of micromanaged and dominated the offensive philosophy for him to now change and say, oh, yeah, now okay. I want to throw the ball. Let more. me ask you this. And now I want more three wide Let me ask you play. this. And let's not forget, though, also, they also did draft Zach Charbonnet as well. Yeah. After they just drafted uh, – Kenneth Walker. So right. I, I still feel like this is a team that's mostly going to use. Well, well, let me ask you this. Receivers. But the last thing is though is that like, I think I think Metcalf had one of those like inefficient, unlucky years. So when we talk about like regression, mm-hmm. I think he's a. Candidate you think he's going to regress the other way? The yeah, positive. I think he's a positive let me ask you this: if so. if the Seahawks right now as is had Gary Wilson on their team, mm-hmm. do you think they would not play Gary Wilson? Or what do you th- how do you think that would play out? Because I, I, no, I don't think they would. Because again, I think you don't think they would no, play Gary Wilson. We again think about the think about the head coach. Remember, they drafted Rashad Penny in the first round and did Second not round. pay him. No, first round. You're right, right. First round. It was, but he was also hurt though. He, no, he, he was not hurt. hurt. He was not hurt when he got when hurt first that started. first year, season. He he did, but he was not hurt when they were still putting him on the bench. 
They drafted him in the first round. Everybody was talking right, about because how that's they, when Chris Carson they, was actually showing but out. They still, but again, but they drafted him in the first round. So what I'm saying is, Pete Carroll is not afraid to just take a player and sit him on the bench. Even when Rashad Penny and both Kenneth Walker were healthy last year, at the same but time, it was still Rashad. I, Penny. I think that's a different situation because I think if Penny didn't get hurt, he would have got that first opportunity to show out. I think because he got hurt, Chris Carson got the opportunity. No, they, he didn't get hurt at the beginning of the year though. I don't think he started the season. I think he got hurt to come out the gate. I mean, we can look back at it, yeah. you know, but but again, just if, if they don't have this major role in mind for Jackson Smith and Jigba to start off the season, I don't see why they would have drafted him in the first this round is, like that. There's a couple different things with this, though, too. So it's not just the head coach and the offensive system that they're going to want. Are they going to be more two or three wide receiver sets? It's also like the quarterback is Geno Smith, and yes, mm-hmm. he played well last year, and the offense is an offense. The offense is a first read. The offense is a second read. He's not going to be somebody that's going to go back there and like kind of pre-read the defense and then know exactly where he's going to go unless he just sees. So you're not a, you, you don't believe in Geno too much. Not that yeah. I don't believe in Geno, but I believe that DK is the number one option. So I think he's going to look to DK's way first. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he's going to look to Lockett's way second. Right, right. And then then and then Jackson's and, and, way third. And I'm not arguing DK being number one. I'm definitely not saying take any of these receivers over DK. Yeah. By by any means, you mm-hmm. know, it's just more so. There's done so much of the pie, right? But that's so saying, much of the pie, know. and I don't know if all that's going to go to DK the way but then you would for that need the third round cost. You would need the offense to change for them. To I think the offense might change a, three, a little bit. A third wide receiver. Yeah, I, I do think that what might happen. What is there for that though? I mean, action, right? They drafted a receiver in the first because round. They also drafted another running back when they didn't need to. Right, and I think they're going to use both those running backs. And that, and, and in the dynasty world, that. Hurt Ken Walker's value a little bit, yeah. Hmm. You know, because I mean, Zach Charbonnet was considered a top three or four running back in the draft for a lot of people in the dynasty world. So when he was drafted by the Seahawks, I mean, the initial reaction was, "Oh no!" First of all, why the hell did they do that? And number two, this dings the hype on. You Kenneth know why Walker they did that? Bit. Number one, historically, they've just had terrible luck when it comes to running back standing yeah, healthy. Yeah, okay? I agree. And it's really caused a lot of issues. Even Kenneth them. Walker got hurt last year. So, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and they, you know, they needed running back replacements. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they needed running back replacements. So, they wanted to shore up that running back room because they are a run first team. Yeah. Pete Carroll is a defensive minded, and they've done a lot on defense. To me, I think that's kind of understated is what they've done on, de- on the defensive end. But, like, they, to me, they, are the, they want to win with defense. They want to control the clock with running the ball. And I just don't see them just like opening up the offense, getting three wide receivers out there to include. I mean, high, it's, it's it, one Jackson of those things where we, we won't know it until we see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if they do do it, I'm not going to be shocked. They, the track record obviously isn't there at the moment, yeah. but they all they also have not had this type of talent. All three position groups. I mean, I'm sorry, all three receivers as well as two high-end running backs. I mean, Chris Carson was good, but he was still a six-round pick. Chris you Carson know? was good, good. Though. Yeah, he was good, but he was still a six. Like, now you have two running backs back-to-back years you drafted in the top three rounds. Chris Carson was better than Kenneth Walker to me as, like, a pure running back. Kenneth Walker was a lot more athletic. Yeah, he could hit home runs. Mm. But Chris Carson was a legit good running back. He got you more than you needed. He kept the chains moving. You think moving. he was better than Kenneth Walker? Yes, he was better than Kenneth Walker. Nah. I even think he was better than Kenneth Walker in the passing game. You think he's better than Rashad Penny? Who, Chris Carson? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. He's better than yes. Penny. Yes. When, okay. when he yeah. was healthy, yes, he was better. He just performed better. He gave you what you needed. I think he, was, he gave what P. Carroll... P. Carroll doesn't want somebody who's just, you know, looking to hit home runs all the time. Because you may hit one home run, but then you may stall out on three drives. I think he was a watered, 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 diluted, as much as possible version of Derrick Henry. Who? Uh, Chris Carson. <laughs> no, he is. Uh, well, I mean. That's just how I see. I don't think he's much in the passing game and all that stuff. But all right, guys. So each episode, we want to do a team spotlight. This week, we're going to do the Rams. Let's talk about the Rams for a second because people believe that the Rams are going to be pretty bad. I think people forgot Assumption. that Cooper Assumption. Right. Ass. Ass. <laughs> ass. Ass. No. Okay. People forget <laughs> how good Cooper Cup was. People forget how good that connection with Matthew Stafford was. Also, Cam Akers is coming back. I don't know if everybody feels good about Cam Akers coming back. This offense isn't that bad. You still have Tyler Higby. What do you guys think about this Rams offense? Let's go through each of their weapons and let's talk about whether you believe in them or you don't and how do you think the Rams are going to be this season. Yeah, man. Uh, this, again, just kind of goes like to piggyback off of the last discussion as far as like assumption goes. Um, I don't necessarily, you know, I think 
I think people are seeing Cooper Cup uh, as a top end wide receiver, and you know, rightfully so. I think he's going to be fully healthy from the, uh, you know, from his uh, injury from last year. By all accounts, there shouldn't be any residual effects. When we last saw him on the field, he was the true number one wide receiver. I think an argument really could be made that he should be the wide receiver one. Hmm. Uh, and I think as we kind of get closer, if we see him like in training camp, and we know the Stafford is there, and we start hearing more positive vibes, like. Um, you know, I think we could see him going in like the top two, top three range. Uh, in my mind, like I've already, I already have him like his number three. I have him three. I have him and him three overall three, or three, three third wide receiver. Three overall, three overall. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, yeah. I really, I really like uh, what Cup gives you from a standpoint of ceiling and just overall floor. I think it's just something that like you can't beat. Uh, and the fact that Stafford's coming back, the fact that Sean McVay is coming back. Uh, and uh, I like that even the, um, uh, what's his name, Donald, uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron Donald's Donald. coming back. Like, mm-hmm. to me, that just says, like, it's a team that, like, has something, like, to prove, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. So, but that, that's not, you know, Cup is not the, you know, the one in question. I think everybody else is. Yeah. You know, Stafford doesn't even get drafted. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's an afterthought. I think people have just kind of given up on him. Mm-hmm. I think what happened with the Rams last year is that it was really one of those true Super Bowl hangovers. And yeah. I think it started from the top with – uh, the, the head coach, coach. yeah. Yep. I think he came in with not a very good offensive scheme because mm-hmm. he is someone who I who I does feel like does a good job of like changing things up. He doesn't just have like one type of offense. Mm-hmm. He plays to his strengths, but I think whatever he devised for that whole 2022 season just like never came to fruition, and it all started with that offensive line. We saw it early. We saw it in that very first game. That offensive line just got absolutely destroyed. Mm-hmm. Stafford, you know, was seeing ghosts. Uh, I mean, it was just – it was a bad situation all around. And he ended up getting hurt. And I think just morale, I think everybody else just gave up. You just won a Super Bowl. What – you know, what are we really fighting for out here? But that being said, I mean, we could easily see Stafford come back. Uh, we'll talk about some of their receiving options now. But Healthy Van, our boy Puka, who, who we'll get into, like – and Higby. And then, you know, O-line can't get any worse. Should be better. Having a reliable run game, I think this offense could be a lot better than what people uh, uh, think, especially mm-hmm. if Sean McVay was in the lab this season and he really kind of took it to heart as far as how bad they looked towards the end of last season. So Stafford, somebody who's undervalued. I think the uh, the Rams wide receiver two is undervalued right now, mm. uh, whether it's Van Jefferson or Puka or mm-hmm. Tyler Higby. Uh, I think they're going undervalued. And then I think Akers – Akers is probably right at value, given, again, where all the other yeah. RBs are going. Uh, you just got to be a believer or, or not. You know, he finished, like, I think I want to say, like, you know, his last three games or so, he finished with, uh, uh, you know. He finished it strong last year. Yeah, he, he finished, he finished strong. strong. Yeah. They yeah. were soft matchups, but he still finished strong. Uh, but you got to remind yourself, like, this was a bad team, like, you know, with, uh, uh, with not a lot of receiving options. We had Baker, quarterback. Uh, so teams weren't really respecting the, the pass game because there was, like, no – there were no receivers. So mm-hmm. for him to still do that, even against, uh, you know, uh, non-elite competition, I think, you know, says a lot. Uh, they haven't done anything to bring in anybody else. Yeah. I don't really like anybody else behind him. Like, I really think that this is an opportunity where he could, you know, I don't think he's like has like high end RB1 uh, upside. But I think, you know, uh, potentially mid, I think would be his ceiling. But I really see him as like a low end RB1 who can give you some good weeks and, and you know, you, you know, we starting these like zero RB builds. He's like a perfect target for me. Yeah. But you don't feel that way about acres, right? Who me? Yeah. What do you mean? As far as not liking him or liking him? As like not liking him. You, you don't like acres. I have no problem with acres. I think okay. he's being drafted at a good spot. He's not drafted too high. Um, mm. He's a starting running back. I don't think there's a threat to his job mm. or his role unless they bring in somebody, which is obviously always a possibility with any running back. Uh, but I actually like Aker's situation. He's probably going to be playing for a contract soon, mm-hmm. you know, so he might be a little bit motivated. Um, and again, the way he finished the year, he, he finished the year good. Yeah. That's another year removed from that Achilles injury, mm-hmm. you know, so it kind of wheels up for me for Aker. So I, I, I like Aker's. And he's the type of player where he can be a starting running back that mm-hmm. you can draft late mm-hmm. and feel comfortable with them. Yeah. Um, but going back to the receivers, and I'm a little bit on the opposite spectrum as far as Cooper Cup. I'm concerned. Mm. Right now, we've seen Cooper Cup. I'm sorry, Cooper Cup do great. 
He he's had one of the greatest wide receiver seasons in NFL history. Mm -hmm. That Super Bowl year, he he came out the gate last year just a blazing, uh, you know, crazy stats. Love it. But I saw just yesterday or the day before he they said he's just now started running. You know, mm. and and you know, obviously I should have known this, but it's one of those things out of sight, out of mind. But because we haven't seen him in so long, we forgot he is still recovering from this injury, mm -hmm. right? Um, we don't know how he's going to start the season. Mm -hmm. We don't know how they're, if they're going to ease him in or if they're just going to say day one, you know, just go all out. Uh, with the way that team is just kind of maneuvering right now, all their moves, these trades, um, Stafford still kind of coming back from injury, yeah. things like that. Sure the coach this offseason was questioning whether he even wanted to return this season or retire. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what – I expect from Cup, and I don't have a problem with Cup, but I think everybody that's drafting right now is drafting him with the assumption he's going to be the same Cup he was before. Yeah. And I'm again, I'm not saying that's not possible, but you have to take the the consideration of him not being the same Cup. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. still kind of working his way back, and if he's still working his way back, is he going to pay off that? What is he going like fifth? pick right now 105 yeah, as far I mean, as ADP I think from an injury mm -hmm. standpoint everything that I've read and just you know talking with you know uh Carlos uh and just kind of seeing all the other uh you know physical therapists orthopedic uh you know kind of projection and outlook for him I, I don't think anybody is concerned about his injury I think he's I think everybody feels like he's ahead of course I think I mean maybe they give him like where you know when he had the injury when he had surgery uh, there were talks that he could have came back last year if he wanted. I think they're just being like extra precautious. Maybe, it. And, and they might be, uh, so, and, and, and they actually might be being extra yeah. cautious. And who's to say they won't take that into season being extra cautious? You know, yeah. I, I just uh, don't know what yeah. to what's going on there. And again, just the fact that they said yesterday he just started running, mm -hmm. which means he hasn't even been participating in these OTAs yeah. at all. Yeah. It just just makes me just kind of hesitate a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Now, with that being said. Again, Cooper Cup is what he is. Nobody's even really having much yeah. of a discussion. And you don't got to take him at number three. Like, I'm not taking him. Yeah, yeah. Falls, it's all perfect. Like, He's going to go yeah. first round. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. no matter what. If you have the 112, even if you hate Cooper Cup, if yeah. you have the 112 and he's yeah. there at 12, you you're taking take Cooper him. Cup. So, that's not even the discussion. It's more these ancillary pieces. Mm -hmm. So, and I know you don't like them, but Van Jefferson's still there. Um, Van Jefferson's mm -hmm. in the contract year. Van Jefferson actually didn't look bad before they brought in A-Rob. You know, yeah. A-Rob kind of made Jefferson kind of uh, push back on the depth chart a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but Van Jefferson might be a thing. He's second-round pick from Florida like three years ago. You yeah. know, yeah. knows the system. He, Other than Cup, he's the longest tenured receiver on that team. Yeah. You know, um, and again, it's a contract year, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's a thing. He's probably somebody yeah. that's totally undrafted, somebody that can be a waiver wire he pickup. Goes, he goes late. Uh, oh, he's being drafted? Yeah, I have a couple of shares. I'm not a believer in Van Jefferson. You, you actually drafted him? Yeah, I drafted Good him. Good for he, you. He, he goes late. I, Good I, job. I do not believe. I've, I've never been a fan of Van Yeah, but Jefferson. you still drafted him. That's smart. <laughs> <That's right>. uh, <laughs> you know, so, what I have not drafted is Puka, and I, and I need, you know. Well, we, we, let, we, let, we let me get to him in a second. Yeah. So after Van Jefferson again. Van Jefferson, good size, uh, contract year. That's the thing. Then you still have Tutu Atwell. Tutu. Yeah. Now, Tutu Atwell, he hasn't really done much. He was drafted two years ago. Sec another second-round pick. Small. Yeah. Extremely small. Yeah. Too, too small. But, but he's fast. Extremely fast. Yeah. yeah. Too, too fast. <laughs> extremely fast. It's like when I, I, was, I was writing out some notes. Yeah. Like, I wrote in small letters, small. And I wrote in big letters, fast. Because like, yeah. he gives you both of the end. If you utilize him right, put him in space, you know, design. I mean, we're talking about Sean McVay, one of the greatest mm -hmm. offensive minds in the league. Yeah. If he could figure out a way to utilize, I mean, it, you have to wonder, why do they take this guy in the second round? But mm -hmm. he's one of those guys, he's not startable, he's not drafted. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he's a guy that you yeah. use to, like, open yeah. space up. Maybe, like, maybe, whenever I guess I'm there. saying is this is not fantasy-wise. This is what yeah. we're talking about, just what they have. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe he's more of a best ball guy. You know, if you want to mm -hmm. do a Ram mm -hmm. stack, maybe take him with one of your last picks, right? Yeah. Because he might, you know, have one of those type of things. Um, but he's he's there. Um, the guy that actually was being used a fair amount yes last year, mm -hmm. Ben 
Quranic. It's Quranic. Yeah. He sucks. He sucks. He yeah, sucks, he but sucks. they used him. And remember what we always yeah. say. That's it why I matter. like Puka. <laughs> remember what we always <laughs> say. It doesn't matter what we think. Yeah. It matters what the coaches Coach, think. Nah, but and they, now like, they know, though. Now yeah. they know. They, now they know he but sucks. But they, they were using him all the way to the last game of the season. Yeah. They were using him, but you could see that they like they like they didn't have a lot of uh, trust in him. Yeah. Confidence in him. Maybe he had a connection with Baker that we didn't know. Maybe they showered together or something. I don't know. You know, they went to go to the bar together or something like that. Um, You still have Lance McClutchin. Who in the beginning of the season we were actually kind of like thinking maybe he might be a thing. Yeah. He wasn't mm-hmm. nothing at all, nah, right? But he, they still he's still there another year in the system. Yeah. Uh, and then Puka, Puka, who was a a senior draft pick, mm-hmm. yeah. BYU. Yep. He had health issues, you mm-hmm. know, which is probably why he he went as late as he did. Yeah. Uh, but definitely has the opportunity, has the size, been getting a little bit of buzz. Yeah, you know who I see like. Again, this is just like this is like best case scenario. This is like you know twentieth round pick or like just somebody to keep in mind and you know pick up after week one. Like I could see them kind of like returning to the days of like where there's like maybe like a more legitimate two option. Like I could see him being like a Robert Woods in his offense. Puka, yeah, like easily. Like he he has that athleticism. I could see them like. I think he's gonna have to fight Van Jefferson, but yeah, I, mean, I just not I feel like I mean, to a, me Van possible, Jefferson is just gonna stay in that role of just being a deep threat. Yeah, and I don't even know that he's that good at that. Uh, but I just don't see. Ben I don't see him as a deep three. I see him more as like a position receiver. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, he, to yeah. me, he's not that great a yeah. run runner. I could be completely wrong, but I just I'm not a Van Jefferson. Well, they fan. just need to give him this opportunity. We haven't really seen it to really say you know you suck or you you got something there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the tight ends, right? Hunter Higby. I feel like Hunter Higby is being a little bit ignored. Tyler. Tyler I'm sorry. Higby. What did I say, Hunter? Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Higby. Tyler. I feel like he is being ignored. Right, yeah, he's produced. He's my highest owned player. He's pr- he's produced. <laughs> I literally right. think he's my highest owned player. Yeah. <laughs> he was kind of a league winner a couple years back too. Yeah, like yeah. somebody that actually was putting, especially in these tight end premium leagues. Yeah. That's um, what you got to think about too, though. Like he is a guy that like weeks 15, 16, 17, You may get two weeks where like for whatever reason, like they have to go to him frequent and yeah. often, and he catches like seven or eight passes yeah. for like seven. And he has and a touchdown. connection with Stafford. He does. Yeah. He has that connection with Stafford. Does. So um, he's a guy. But don't also ignore the trade, the Jalen Ramsey trade, hmm. bringing in Hunter Long mm-hmm. from the Dolphins, who who I forget if he was a third, fourth round, maybe even a second round pick of the Dolphins. But this guy is talented. He hasn't got the opportunity. People were thinking he was going to take over Mike Gusecki's role. Mm-hmm. Or Mike Gusecki's job mm-hmm. when you know Mike Gusecki got franchise tag last year by the Dolphins. Yeah. At the time, they were thinking maybe they wouldn't resign him. Yeah. yeah, that was that was stupid. But um, they trade him. Like he 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 has a chance to be a thing over yeah. in the Rams. He's still very young. Yeah. Again, talented. I saw a highlight recently where you know he caught a touchdown. You know these OTA highlights. They can make anybody look good, but they still put it out there. You know, yeah. so, so you're just gonna skip over Bryce Hopkins. Yeah. He's good, though. <laughs> no, I'm gonna skip over. <laughs> <laughs> totally skipped over. Right. So, uh, okay, right. he's there. Okay. He's there, but yeah. I mean, he's a receiving option. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, but all these guys, man, I'm telling you, we look back at it in the season, we'll be like, man, one of these guys are a thing. Yeah. And if you just kind of just pay attention, you can kind of be one of the first ones in line to get them. Yeah. Because the first time they do something, everybody's gonna kind of be like, uh, yeah. is this a you know yeah. one off or yeah. is this a real thing? You know, if you're just aware of who they are. You might be able to kind of jump the gun a, a little bit. That's a good point. Like, these guys that we talk about, these late-round picks, like, you don't have to draft them because people are going to assume that it was just a one-off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you're aware of that now, you're aware of the possibilities now, it is a lot easier to put in a waiver claim for them mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get them that first week and then just have them. Yeah. yeah. Or even just get them before the first week and say, you know what, I'm going to roll the dice. Yeah, see what and you if got. he doesn't, he's, yeah. throwing, he back doesn't the water. he's throwing back in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But one of these guys is going to hit. Yeah, um, yeah Puka's a, rook, a rookie, so he has a lot to uh, overcome. But uh, you know, I mean, I can see. We him. like him. We draft him in our dynasty league. Yeah, yeah. yeah we draft yeah. him. So yeah. I, took, yeah. I took him everywhere I could. All right, guys, I think we're over time. Wait, 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 wait. What's up? I got a, a few sleepers. Yeah, no, sleepers. I'm just going to say their names. Dynasty sleepers. Yeah, dynasty. We don't give out sleepers. We don't give out sleepers. <laughs> and I just want to mention one more thing. This is our first episode with Roto Underworld, so I'm going to throw a little gem out there that yeah. we know we always bring it up, yeah. but we don't bring it up enough. Yeah. And I think people need to take a little bit more, um, uh, pay attention a little bit more. Okay. But as far as the sleepers, yeah, I mentioned one earlier, Jeremy Rucker. And this is more dynasty sleepers. So for my dynasty group, these guys aren't dynasty guys. I just got them in last year. Yeah, they just is. still kind of yeah, dipping yeah. their toe in the water. But uh, Jeremy Rucker for the, the Jets. 
Third round pick last year from Ohio State. Um, Chris Sims, who you know always has those controversial rankings, ranked him as number one tight end last year. Um, so and he's been getting a lot of buzz in OTAs. Like literally, hmm. uh, search his name on Twitter. You'll see what I'm talking about. Like they love that guy. Um, Cole Turner, the tight end for the the I was gonna say the the I'm not here for this Logan Thomas slam. Uh, <laughs> 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 the guy that's gonna take Logan Thomas's job, Cole Turner. Look him up. He's a Logan nice one as well. A, oh, special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, and then of course y'all know I, I like Chris Rodriguez. I don't, yeah. uh, we'll see what happens with him. He doesn't have much of a passing game to him, um, but the coaches like him specifically. Be enemy. He specifically was standing on the table to to uh, pick up Chris Rod, uh, Rodriguez. And then the one more thing I want to say. All right. Okay. This is a gem, especially for people. Oh, not even especially. Only for people that play FFPC, because that's what we tend to play a lot. That's kind of where he won his his two championships and all that money. And you um, came in fifth place last year. And I came in fifth place. Yeah, whatever. Oh. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget. All right. Where, where's my camera? Right here? Yeah, yeah. All right. Get the close up. Don't forget the first game of the season. It's a free that look. Thursday night game is a free look. Mm -hmm. So that means we're talking about the Chiefs. And the Lions, both those teams, they're going to play their game. You're going to see how they score. And then at that point, you're going to decide whether you want to put them in your lineup or not. So with that being said, and, you know, I'm not talking about the obvious ones, the the Kelsey's. I know where you're going with this one. The, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the the Goffs or the Gibbs and all of them or the Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm talking about the kickers, mm -hmm. the defenses. The wide receiver twos and threes. All these ancillary pieces, just draft them. Just mm -hmm. draft them, right? You see how they play out their work that first week? If they suck, yeah. throw them out there, pick somebody else up. And it's not a bad, yeah. If you got a free roster spot, just a guy that just like, you know, you got a roster spot to burn, you just didn't draft well, or you just, just got to pick a line or a cheat. Just Josh throw Reynolds, them on there. Marvin Jones. Yes. MVS. Sky Moore. Justin Ross, uh, Justin Rice. Rice. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Justin Rasheed Rice. Rice. Justin Ross. Um, uh, Laporta. Yeah. yeah. Sam Laporta. But those, those guys have been drafted. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's drafted, but he's still drafted late. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's a one up. Uh, again, uh, you're drafting, uh, what's the kicker for the Chiefs? Buckner. Yeah. But Patterson, Riley Patterson, the guy that was with the Jaguars last year. That did pretty good. Yeah. He's an option, you know. I won't even mind drafting the Lions defense. Cause Jared Goff. You never, mind, you never know, KC right? KC defense, Jared Goff. Yeah, KC yeah. defense, Lion defense. Just see. And if they suck, you can throw them out. If they're good enough, you put them in your lineup. You got free points right there. Bank your points. Yeah. So. Jared Goff is a good guy. Like, if, you, if you're kind of concerned about your uh, starting quarterbacks first, you know. We good. Wanna, we Jared Goff. Off, Jared Goff is a yeah. good option to go yeah. with. Yeah. And then if he fails, you – Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. Well, all right, come on. <laughs> That's right. a I don't put too many hands out there, but yeah. On that note, guys, we are out for this episode. Yes, sir. Please like, rate, subscribe. We're out. Yes, sir. Oh,